My name is Eric, and behind me I have a virtual machine running Manjaro Linux, and I'm going to install Tutor on it uh, from beginning to end, hopefully without skipping any steps. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure my system is up to date, which is always a good idea when you're using development tools and my system is up to date. If yours isn't, you probably should update your system. And if you're using a rolling release distribution like I am, cross your fingers and hope that your system doesn't break. Now I'm going to clone Pewter. To do that, I'm going to copy the URL from the webpage, github.com slash heypewter slash pewter. I'm going to copy this URL and clone it in my terminal here. I'm going to clone it onto my desktop. And I'm going to add dash dash recursive. That's going to make sure all the submodules in Peter are installed as well. Uh, as far as I'm aware, if you omit this and don't install the submodules, Peter will still run, but you might be missing some tooling or some feature that might become relevant later. So I would recommend making sure that this is there. Now that the repository is fully cloned, it's time to run Pewter. But to do that, I need to first make sure I have all the essential tooling on my operating system. If you're using a distribution of Linux, you'll need a package that has all of the standard compiler tools. In Debian-based distros, that's usually called build-essentials. In uh, Arch-based distributions like this one, it's um, base-devel. Uh, I think it might be the same in um, uh, Red Hat family distros, I'm not sure. I already had it installed, so I just quickly reinstalled it. Uh, you'll also want to install NVM, or Node Version Manager. This is, in my opinion, the best way to install Node.js, because you can very conveniently switch between different versions of Node. Uh, I already have it installed, so if I, uh, if I run this, it's... Uh, just going to do a quick reinstall. Uh, I installed NVM somewhat incorrectly. Uh, doesn't work like this. It's in my bash, uh, bash RC because I forgot that Mandro uses ZSH instead. So I have to source um, bash RC, let it output a bunch of horrible errors. Um, but then, whoops. But then NVM exists. So assuming you have the build essentials or base devil and NVM installed. You can install the correct version of Node to run Pewter, which right now is version 22. And after that's installed, I'm going to type NVM use 22. And you can do node dash dash version just to make sure that you have the version installed and in your path that you expect. After this, we need to navigate to the Pewter directory that we cloned and run npm install. Assuming you've installed the necessary compiler tools and the correct version of Node, you shouldn't run into an error here. If you do run into an error here, more likely than not, it'll be an error beginning with Node GYP or GYP, which is the compiler tooling for compiled Node modules. Those are the most finicky across different uh, operating systems or distribution of Linux just because of the nature of compiling lower level software. That looks like it finished successfully. There were no errors. So now we should just be able to run Pewter, which is as simple as npm start. At the time of recording this, uh, there are some race conditions when Pewter starts, which is why I see this error message here. These are only occurring in this virtual machine and none of the other devices I own. So I suspect it's just because the virtual machine is a little bit slower. Um, but either way, this is actually really convenient because now I can demonstrate how to get stack traces for errors on uh, on Peter. So Peter did successfully start up, but we have this alarm, and we can type alarm colon info, and then that identifier um, beside the 
square brackets alarm here to put that identifier there. And uh, that will let us get a stack trace. I'm going to zoom out this terminal a little bit because it's, uh, it's a little small. And I am going to restart Pewter because I think this race condition prevents something from working. Uh, basically, it's saying the system user's directory doesn't exist yet, but then it creates the system directory after that. Um, it's also going to open Pewter in not my default browser. I'm not quite sure why it does that. Uh, so now I'm just waiting for Webpack jobs to finish. Uh, we have the sockets error as well. That's another race condition that only seems to happen in this virtual machine. Uh, so we might not... Oh, we do get pewter. Okay, that's good. So I hit the login screen, and the reason that happened is because I've been... Um, this took a few takes for me to get here. So I have a pewter authentication token in my local storage and in my uh, cookies. So if I remove these tokens uh, and I reload the page, uh, this is probably what you'll see first. It's this welcome to pewter and you'll be logged into a temporary user, which is why this warning sign is showing up here. And the, this is the same thing, the save session button. What you want to do at this point is log out to get back to this login screen. And then you want to log into the administrator account, which is shown in the terminal here. So it's admin, and then we get this password, which you can just copy. And then you'll get this, uh, this welcome screen again. You can click get, getting, get Started or the X button. They, they both do the same thing. And now I'm going to change my password. Uh, first thing to do so that you can log into the admin account again. I'm actually going to zoom this out a bit because I set the resolution on my VM pretty low. And let's change this password. So the current password is still in my clipboard. And there we go. So my password's changed. Uh, so it'll be easier to log back into this now. Uh, there are some other security options like 2FA, uh, which does work uh, without setting up a phone verification or anything because it uses an authenticator app. So you could set that up as well, which would be recommended if this instance is going to be on the public internet, or maybe even if it's on a LAN, if you want to be um, really safe so there we have it. Pewter is running. Now let's get into some of the configuration that you might want to do. Right now I have Pewter uh, expecting that I'm going to access it through pewter.localhost, and it will not work on under LAN with my current configuration. However, we do have some configuration parameters and some documentation to solve that problem. So I'm going to start with, I could go into the doc folder here, but I'm going to go into wiki. These are the same thing. We generate the wiki from the documentation in the repository. And you'll see the first page has instructions for users, deployers, and app developers. We are running Pewter, so right now we're a deployer. So I'm going to go to hosting instructions. Uh, and it discusses some of the configuration in one of them. This is the important one, domain name. If we want to access Pewter on a LAN, the easiest way to do that is to allow nip.io domains. So this is the configuration parameter we need. And I'll show you where to find that. So starting from our desktop here, this is where I cloned Pewter. And in the Pewter directory, under source, or sorry, not source, under volatile, this is our, this is sort of our development system information folder. So if uh, you had a production installation, this would be a slash etc and runtime would be slash var. If you're familiar with um, directory structures and Linux servers, this directory is, directory is called volatile because it's 
uh, since we're in a development environment, the expectation is we might just want to delete everything in here once in a while and get a fresh start just to test our changes in a deterministic uh, sort of environment without confounding variables. Um, but that digression aside, uh, to configure Pewter, you can go into config and open config.json in your favorite text editor or IDE. And I'm going to add this configuration parameter just right in the root scope like that. Uh, some things are under services. Uh, another thing I can do actually is I can, instead of modifying the generated config, I can uh, I can extend the config that's described under configuration under the deployer setting. Uh, and that is right here. So instead of editing config.json, you can make a local config that requires config and tell Pewter to load that one. Um, so if you're changing a lot of configuration parameters, I would recommend doing this because that means you can regenerate the config when you upgrade Pewter by deleting the old config. Then it just regenerates it because your changes are in a different file. They won't, uh, they won't be uh, removed or deleted. So now that I have NIPIO domain set to true, I can go back to Pewter and instead of Pewter.localhost, I can go to 127 or yeah, 127.0.0.1.nip dot io. So this is not an IP address. This is all of these subdomains on nip.io, like a subdomain and a sub subdomain and a sub sub subdomain. Uh, and it maps it to our local IP address. Um, it says it's not secure because I think it assumed I wanted HTTPS. So you might have to, it's because I forgot the port. You still need to put the port. Uh, it says invalid host header. That's because I did not restart Pewter after I changed my configuration. Now that I've changed my configuration, I can restart Pewter. Um, Pewter's going to try to open Firefox, which I wasn't using. Uh, there's a way to disable the automatic um, opening of a browser as well, if you would like to do that. Uh, whoops. So if I do this now, now it's working. Uh, I'm not sure what that prompt was, but anyhow. And that didn't work here. Okay, so I think in my case, I also need to set uh, domain to 127.0.0.1.nip.io. I'm going to give that a try. Uh, and I need to also restart Peter again. Okay, that works. Uh, so you might need to also set domain. I don't remember having to do that on any other devices, but uh, I can't imagine that's non-deterministic behavior. So you, you probably need to set domain. Uh, with that set, you should be able to use Pewter. Um, if you want to use it, uh, I was going to say, you should be able to use it on LAN. You'll need to change this to a LAN IP instead, and then you'll use that domain. Uh, another thing you can do is allow, uh, allow all host values. Uh, so if you do that, you don't really need to set domain. Actually, no, you still do need to set domain because of the GUI. But that will allow um, any any domain name. It's not recommended because of potential security threats like host header injection. Uh, so if you're hosting a public pewter instance, you probably should do that. But if you're just doing local development or playing around on your LAN or a VPN, it's probably fine. Uh, so there we have it. That's pewter installed and configured. Thanks for watching.